Takeaway number one. Winter is coming. A central theme of the series is the long-lasting seasons. Already in the first episode, we're told by Ned Stark that... Winter is coming. We're told that after a long period of summer, winter will inevitably come. George R. R. Martin is definitely referring to the market cycles here. A bull market may last for years, but we all know that eventually, positivism and greed will be replaced by negativism and fear. And then we'll see yet another bear market. Do you think that it's a coincidence that George R. R. Martin has been delaying his upcoming book, The Winds of Winter, for almost a decade now? Nope. He's been holding on to it since the financial crisis to be able to release it in the midst of the next bear market, just so that he can announce that he told us so. Jon Snow is clearly the protagonist of the series, and probably the character that George R. R. Martin wants the reader to identify with the most. And what do people keep saying to Jon Snow? You know nothing, Jon Snow. Undoubtedly, the message here is that no one can foresee exactly when the crash will come, but one can, and should, be prepared when it does. So what's the advice? Always be prepared for a market crash, even if no one knows when it's coming. Takeaway number two. The power of compound interest. The Night King and his armies penetrated the wall in the last season and are now marching on Westeros as a potential threat for all its inhabitants. But how did the Night King become this powerful? Wasn't he just a single dude created by the children of the forest? The answer is that he mastered the art of compounding. You see, the Night King can turn dead people into allies of his own dead army. So, he has the power of compound interest on his side. This is a positive reinforcing spiral. A greater army means more dead people, which means an even greater army, which means even more dead people, which means... Uh, you get the point. Investing in the stock market is no different. A larger stock portfolio means greater returns, which means an even larger stock portfolio, which means even greater returns, which means you get the point. And who's the master of compounding interest? Well, Warren Buffett is, of course. George R. R. Martin has probably paid a lot of money to keep a lot of people quiet about this, but I will now reveal it to you. The Night King isn't Brandon Stark. It's Warren Buffett. And who is sitting on the investing throne? Well, Buffett is. This proves that the Night King will be sitting on the Iron Throne by the end of the series. Called it! So what's the advice? Stick to a sound investing process and let compounding do its wonders. Eventually, you'll be as powerful as the Night King. I mean, uh, rich as Warren Buffett. Takeaway number three. Stick to your circle of competence. Season three of Game of Thrones is when Daenerys Targaryen first is established as a real potential threat to the Iron Throne. In uh, one of the episodes, she frees an army of unsullied men from the businessman Krasnis Mo Naklas. Daenerys is trading with the merchant and tells him that she's willing to give away one of her dragons for 8,000 unsullied men. Here, George R. R. Martin wants to teach us another important thing about investing in the stock market. That one should always stick to his circle of competence. This is a takeaway from Warren Buffett, who says that one shouldn't swing at everything in the stock market. Just wait for the pitch that's right in your sweet spot. That way, you too can hit home runs. Krasnis Muna Klaas knows nothing about dragons at all. His decision represents that of a speculator, not an investor. He paid a hefty price of 8,000 unsullied men for a single share of dragon. Why is this speculation and not investing? 
Isn't it possible that uh, Krasny's Mona class can sell the dragon for much more than 8,000 Unsullied once it's become uh, larger and stronger? Surely others will be willing to pay more for it at that point. This could be true, but Krasnys didn't know much about dragons. He didn't know if the dragon would be able to survive long enough to become large and powerful. He didn't even know if the dragon would stay loyal to him, which it didn't. What's the advice? Invest in what you know, otherwise you're a speculator, not an investor. Takeaway number 4. Mind your psychological influences. In his book, The Most Important Thing, Howard Marks says that The biggest investing errors come not from factors that are informational or analytical, but from those that are psychological. Overconfidence, for instance, is one such trait, which George R. R. Martin points to in one of the most epic yet most gruesome scenes in the whole series. Tyrion Lannister has been sentenced to death, accused of murdering his son-in-law, King Joffrey. He demands a trial by combat, and luckily, Oberyn Martell, the Red Viper, comes to his aid. Oberyn is faced off with the Mountain, and we, as viewers, expect that Tyrion is doomed. But Oberyn proves to be a tremendous fighter, and forces the mountain to his knees. Here's where the gruesomeness begins. Oberyn forgets about minding his psychological influences. Oh, no, you can't die yet, you haven't confessed. He becomes overconfident in his victory, and later he pays the ultimate price for it. What's the advice? No matter how skillful of an investor you are, if you can't control your emotions, it'll be the death of your investment career. Takeaway number 5. Use a margin of safety. As viewers, we are reminded of the age-old wisdom of Benjamin Graham to use a margin of safety in basically every season of the show. Season 1. A uh, Bran I really don't think that it's safe to go that high without a climbing rope. Yeah, too late. Season 2 Is it really necessary to disarm dragons of their fire breathing if one decides to capture them? Yep, it is. Season 3 I've been invited to a wedding at Walder Frey's. Uh, what's the dress code? Chainmail. Season 4 if King Joffrey would have known about margin of safety, he would have had his servants taste the food before him. Luckily for us, he didn't. Season 5 Where was Ghost, Jon Snow's direwolf, when all this happened? Season 6 Do we really need a fire escape plan for this building? Escape plan? Fire? Nah, don't worry. We have faith on our side. Season 7 Who builds a freaking wall that can be melted? I mean, seriously! So, what's the advice? Invest using a margin of safety. You never know when or even if you'll ever need it, but better safe than sorry. Here's a Game of Thrones Season 1-7 to seven Stock Market Advice Recap. Winter is coming. Prepare. Use compounding to your favor. Invest in what you understand and know. Mind your psychological influences. Use a margin of safety. The next time you find yourself procrastinating in front of yet another rewatch of Game of Thrones, feeling all bad about it, don't. Remember, you're actually studying to become a better investor. Cheers, guys.